Spotify might have broadened your taste in music, but it probably also influences what songs you like. How does Spotify change what you listen to? This is the University of the Netherlands. When I lived in Philadelphia, I used to own a lot of music. I packed all my CDs in boxes when I first moved to Europe. Faced with yet another transatlantic move, I decided to ditch my boxes and give Spotify a try. Rather than owning music, along with all its physical drawbacks, the business model of Spotify is about renting access to a vast catalog of music stored in the cloud. Almost 140 million people around the world listen to music this way. Does this massive all-you-can-eat buffet of songs change our listening? I became immediately interested in the question. But first, some history. Before music was widely available through the internet, music was sold physically on vinyl, tapes, and later CD. Digitization brought significant upheaval to the music industry. Just at the turn of the millennium, Napster, the first peer-to-peer file-sharing service, allowed users to steal music. Industry revenues declined for about a decade. Meanwhile, digital paper song systems like iTunes arrived in 2003, and streaming via subscription systems like Spotify in 2008. Music industry revenues started to turn around in 2015 and are now almost back to what they were at the beginning of the millennium. Nowadays, streaming has overtaken physical records and accounts for more than half of global total revenue in the music industry. And Spotify is the largest streaming platform followed by Apple Music and Amazon and others. So, more and more people have switched to streaming. With over 50 million songs available on demand, how do you discover new music? It's simply impossible to know all there is to offer. Platforms curate what they show us, so they have the potential to influence what we listen to. What does this mean for listeners and for artists? For my research, I compared the listening behavior of about 2,000 users over 16 months. During that time, about a quarter of them joined Spotify. By comparing the behavior of people before and after adopting Spotify with people who did not adopt, we can estimate the effect of adoption on several different dimensions of listening behavior. First question, does Spotify increase the overall amount of music we listen to? Yes. People listen to 50% more music after Spotify, even months later. Why? Because the price of listening is lower. You don't have to pay per song on Spotify. On iTunes, it's generally 99 cents. It only makes sense to buy a song on iTunes if you think it will provide you with more value than 99 cents. If it's less, you won't buy it. However, on Spotify, the price is zero. You pay a 10 euro subscription fee, but the cost per song of listening is zero. Second question, does Spotify increase the number of different songs, artists, and genres that you listen to? What about superstars? Yes. We find that Spotify lets users expand the number of songs, artists, and genres they listen to regularly. Before Spotify, users in our sample listened to about 33 different artists per week. After Spotify, that grew to 45 different artists per week. Why? Music is an experience good, which means it's hard to know how much you value it before you experience it. Before Spotify, you had to make sure that the song or album you wanted to buy was good enough to risk the money. This tends to favor superstars and already popular artists who are more of a sure thing rather than lesser known artists. Because the cost of Spotify is the same regardless of how much variety you listen to, in other words, the price of variety is zero, that means that users can costlessly experiment. We also find that people spread their listening out more equally across varieties and that they listen less to superstars or personal favorites. That may be a good thing because it creates a more level playing field. More artists can be listened to than just Ed Sheeran or Ariana Grande. Third question, how does Spotify influence how much new music you discover? As I've said, Spotify lets you experiment freely. So it should be no surprise that on average, these experiments are not so good. That crazy album you listen to on Spotify, it's probably worse than something you would have bought on iTunes. We look at how many songs people listen to repeatedly in order to judge how people value the discoveries from these experiments. The idea is that you won't listen to the same bad song twice. On average, the new stuff you try and listen to is indeed worse than what you tried out when you still had to pay per song or album. Most experiments don't work out. On the other hand, there are a few experiments that are great, and the top new discoveries made on Spotify are listened to more often 
than the top new discoveries made before. In other words, your best new discoveries are better than they used to be. So far, so good. Users listen to more music, more variety, and discover more new stuff, the best of which is better than it was before. But what if the new stuff that we discover is the same new stuff that everyone else discovers? Do platforms like Spotify steer us all towards the same music? As I mentioned earlier, no one can know all 50 million songs. How Spotify curates its music, what gets displayed at the top, can influence our listening. Why would a platform do this? In the US, it came out in court that the music streaming service Pandora was involved in a scheme that directed more listening to music from a certain label in exchange for a discount on royalty payments. Whether platforms bias recommendations to their most profitable sellers is something the European Commission is currently investigating. Nobody knows whether Spotify is doing this, so it's interesting to see if there's evidence of this in our data. Playlists are one way of influencing what we get to see on Spotify, and they account for about a third of listening on Spotify. There are essentially two kinds, personalized playlists based on your past listening behavior and playlists curated by Spotify, which are the same for everyone. The playlist with the most followers is the one curated by Spotify, today's top hits, and is followed by over 26 million people. It's like a radio station on steroids, much larger than the largest radio station in the US. This and other Spotify curated playlists are the same for everyone regardless of your taste and preferences. These general playlists make up 20% of all listening. So does Spotify make people's listening more similar or more different to each other? The story there is that, yes, at first glance, our music consumption is becoming more similar. But the reason for that is different than you might think. As I mentioned earlier, when we listen to more music in general, when we adopt Spotify, in part because variety is free. You pay the same price regardless of how much you listen to. This means that the set of music we consume expands. And that means that any two users are more likely to have some music in common. Not because Spotify is pushing them to the same music, but just because they're listening to more songs overall. This is certainly not a bad thing for consumers. At Tilburg, we developed a method to adjust similarity for this more listening overall effect I just mentioned. When you take into account this effect, what you see is that actually people become more different, not more similar to each other. The increase in similarity we saw at the beginning is due to people just consuming more music overall, not Spotify steering listeners to the same songs. Why? Well, we have some evidence that personalization, as you would expect, is making users more different. When someone first joins Spotify, there's a cold start problem. There's no prior listening history on which to base personalization. Once a user has been on the platform for a while, Spotify can then start to customize based on his or her tastes. This is what we see. The longer someone has been on Spotify, the more different his or her music consumption becomes relative to others. Using similar logic, we also find that heavier users also become more dissimilar than lighter users. So is this good for consumers? Basically, yes. People are consuming more and discovering different, not the same, songs and artists. We started this lecture with a question, how does Spotify change what you listen to? So what have we learned? After joining Spotify, consumers listen to more music, they spread their listening out across more artists and fewer superstars, they discover more new music, and while most of them are not keepers, the best new things discovered on Spotify are played more on repeat than those before Spotify. Finally, People aren't discovering the same music. After joining, they're becoming more different, not more similar. It's interesting to think about your own musical tastes and how they've changed if you've joined Spotify or another streaming service. Do you recognize some of our results in your own experience, or is it completely different? Thank you. Thank you.